Delicias, meaning delight or pleasure in Spanish, like satisfying your hunger with a delicioso ceviche or sipping on a tasty cantarito on a hot summer day. As a growing city, attracting so many people from all around the world, Milwaukee has opened many doors to a variety of Latin American flavors. Today, my friend Nolwen Guilarte from Venezuela, new to Cream City, will take us to a Peruvian cuisine to find the best ceviche in town and also learn a little bit about Chef Maritza Paz and her inspiration to open a restaurant here in Milwaukee. We will also get to meet special guests that will share with us more of their inspirations as Latin American descendants and get to hear about their favorite tastes in the community here. So hang on tight because today will be Una Delicia. Bienvenidos and welcome to Delicias Milwaukee, where one plate can take us to many places and one taste can take us to many more. I'm your host, Michelle Zamora. Thank you so much for being here with me today. As a Milwaukee-based salsa instructor, I have met very many great dance performers with all types of talented backgrounds, like culinary. And that's why I would love for you to meet my lovely friend, Roberto Jaimes, who's recently opened up a Mexican restaurant right here. He opened one up in Kenosha and would love to share with us a special treat that will definitely quench our thirst. Beto. Tell us all about this restaurant. I'm so excited to learn more about it. I know you as a dancer. I didn't even know that you had a restaurant, so let's hear all about it. <laughs> so this restaurant is called Los Canderitos, located in Kenosha, which okay. is where I was born um, and raised. So I recently moved over here to Milwaukee. Um, but this restaurant has been in business for 16 years, actually. My dad came here as an immigrant, um, started from the bottom, worked his way up. His dream was to be an entrepreneur. And uh, yeah, I'm the second generation. I'm here to continue his legacy, and that's what I've been doing this past two years. Wow, that's incredible. Family business then? Yep, family business. Uh, I think that's the biggest blessing is to be able to work with my dad and my little brothers. Uh, but yeah, we're all there working. Wow, that's amazing. Good for you. Thank I'm you. super excited to hear about this other part of your life. Yeah. Um, I can definitely relate, you know, with Latino culture, just working with the family and how food is very often um, a big part of that togetherness. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to learn more. Yeah, that's the way. <laughs> what, uh, what inspired you guys to open it there in Kenosha? Do you have family there or did you find, feel there was a lack of Mexican cuisine there? Um, so actually, my dad was tired of being an employee <laughs> and he just had the drive and um, support to do his own thing and with hard work um, we made it to 16 years. Wow, awesome. Do you feel like, you know, I know you mentioned something about these past couple years and mm -hmm. as we know these past couple years have been really really rough for people mm -hmm. in the restaurant industry so has this pandemic affected your family's business? How has that impacted mm -hmm. you guys? Well it definitely changed and I know it changed for a lot of people who are in this industry. Um, especially us, we had a, t a strong takeout delivery a source of revenue um, but that's actually when I came back, I seen my parents struggling and I decided, you know, this is my part. This is what I'm supposed to do. Mm. Um, they need my help and I pretty much dropped what I was doing before to make this a priority in my life. Um, and the way I did it is taking charge of, you know, adapting, you know, third party, uh, DoorDash, Grubhub, um, right. really promoting takeout and really making the customer feel safe when they walk in your building. Yeah, that's super important, right? That hospitality and mm -hmm. also, you know, going back to the culture of just making sure people feel at home and like they're part of your family right there mm -hmm. in the restaurant. So that's always beautiful, beautiful to hear. Um, I want to hear a little bit about the food. So can you tell okay. us a little bit more about the dishes? What are yep. your favorite dishes? So it is authentic Mexican restaurant and we take pride in that. Um, everything is made from scratch from the salsas to prepping the meat to cutting it, marinating it. Um, Everything is, we look for the freshest produce, uh, the good cuts of meat. Uh, recently, we remodeled, and uh, the new thing we have is a full cocktail bar. Okay. And we're really taking pride in using fresh squeezed juices. So mm. I'll demonstrate, well, you know, a little something later. Oh, for you. super excited. I hope you guys make good palomas there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have yes, to come do. by for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, talking about the dishes, though, do you have any specialty dishes that are, you know, classic and authentic to Mexican cuisine, such mm -hmm. as um, chile relleno or, mm -hmm. you know, una tan pequeña? Are there things like these classic oh, dishes yeah. that you have on the menu? So we have a, a good you know, long menu, which sometimes I want to cut it down because something could be a little too much work, but, okay. you know, it really makes it part of authentic Mexican restaurant. Yes, we have a chile relleno, 
uh, Vista La Tapicana, uh, Carne Asada. Mm. But my favorite is Carne de Puerco, which is chunks of uh, carnitas. Um, they're sauteed in whatever your choice of uh, salsa roja or salsa verde, and we can adapt to your spiciness as well. If you want oh. a very spicy, we got you. If that's not your style, it will simmer it down a little for that's you. Pretty cool. that's, that's pretty cool. That's my favorite. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great that you cater that to the audience that you have coming into yeah, Kenosha. Yeah, everyone has so. the different spice levels, you know. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you got to know what you're getting into when you go to a Mexican restaurant. Oh, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely ask. <laughs> yep. What would your uh, favorite thing be um, regarding opening this restaurant to the public? Is there anything that specifically touches you when it comes to the public and, you know, just the intention behind the restaurant? Well, I think the special thing, I think it's for a lot of people as well in this industry, is the connections you make with your customers. Mm -hmm. um, these people will end up being regulars for you. Um, you see them daily, you start figuring out, oh, they have kids, what they do for the career. And you know, these people come to have a good time, they talk with you and they like to see your face. So really after COVID, after we opened up back to the public, um, it felt good to have people there and it felt good to be there working again. Yeah, it's really connecting with people. and Yeah, it's I... all about connecting with the community. Um, and then being there with my dad too, seeing him, he's happy, he sees a smile down there working. And my little brother who I'm training as well. So. Wow, super cool. Awesome. Well, we're gonna get to something really special that you have prepared for us, right? Can you tell us a little bit more about what you're gonna make yeah. right here for so us? So what we have here <laughs> is a cantarito, which is uh, these little clay cups, um, which are handmade in Mexico, uh, imported here. Um, these ones we actually got designed for, you know, the little image here, it says a cantarito. And it's actually what our business is named after, Los Cantaritos. So obviously, you know, to make the branding and marketing work, why not make the best Cantarito in town, right? <laughs> so I'm going to actually demonstrate for you how to make it. And I'm going to make it in a way where you can make it at home. Um, you know, at the restaurant, we got the little shaker and the juicer right here. You could do it at home easily. So start by getting your cup. You can get these. I'm going to plug the seven mile here, or what our Latinos call it, Siete Mias. You can get these there. Let's start by putting a little bit of ice in there. And I think everyone knows where to get ice from. <laughs> Fill it about three-fourths of the way. There we go. And now start with your fresh citrus juices. So we got a toronja, which is grapefruit, naranja, which is an orange, and a limon, which is a lime. And no matter what order you do it in, I like starting with the smaller ones, so I'm gonna do the lime. And about an ounce each, so sometimes if you have a really good lime, it would just be one lime. Don't put too much lime though, because then it'll get too tangy. There we go. This smells so good. It smells so citrusy already. It yeah. makes me want to just <laughs> <laughs> try it as soon as you're done. Now with the orange, if you have a juicer, great. If not, you know, you got to work with what God gave you, which is your hands. <laughs> Squeeze it in there. There we so go. So classically, you always use all three? The grapefruit. Oh, yeah. All three citrus anymore. juices. Okay. Add a little bit more. <laughs> there we go. And now the grapefruit. All right. And if you get a good ripened season one, you only got to use half. Like this one I just seen has a lot of juice in it. So you'd be good with one. Wow, super fresh. And then you guys use fresh fruit um, over yep. at, the, at the restaurant as well? Yep, no better way to make it. I mean... Since the flavor is completely different when you use fresh. So after you put your citrus juices in, add a little bit of salt, which I'm using kosher salt, but you can use whatever you like. Put like one or two dashes. This really helps neutralize the citrus in it. Next, add your tequila. Your choice, but my favorite is Gran Centenario. Oh, yeah. It's a very traditional one. Um, it's not marketed as much as you know, all the popular brands, but can't go wrong with this one. One of my dad's favorites, too. And you can't oh, go wrong yeah. with reposado, ever. Yeah, you can't go wrong with reposado. <laughs> add a shot and a half or an ounce and a half. Um, if you're having a hard day, add two shots if you like. There we go. It's about a shot and a half. Next, you're going to add your squirt or grapefruit soda. Yes. You're going to top it off with that. You know it's traditional when you got the squirt. Mm hmm there we go. And then we're just going to add a little bit of chamoy on the top. This is a spicy one. I like spicy, but you could do your own. And then usually you can have a little extra plate where you can rim it, but we're doing this right here. So, so 
Sorry if I make a little mess. I'm gonna sign here for you. And then just top off with some tahini. Yes. And add as that. much as you like. Wow. Now let's use this little cool straw we have here. Stir it around. And there you go. Come on. Wanna give it a shot? Que rico. Yeah, let me try it. Okay. Yep, that's exactly Salud. what I needed today. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and that's what our, I mean, that's what we're focusing right now is, you know, really marketing our fresh cocktails. So. Awesome. Thank you so much for demonstrating. This has been really lovely. Yeah. Well, really appreciate it. It's a pleasure being here and to be able to show what, uh, you know, talk a little bit about our family's business. Yeah. And to show you this. Yeah, wonderful. So, I, you know, of course we're talking about this drink here, but um, you guys have micheladas. We talked oh, a little yeah. bit about palomas, too. So actually, michelada is probably the top seller. Okay. You know, you just can't go wrong. Um, we make that fresh as well. We mm -hmm. use, I mean, traditionally use the clamato. Mm -hmm. We put fresh lime juice, uh, salsa maye, mm -hmm. a little bit of Worcester, a little bit of salt. And we make it in small batches, so each one is uh, perfect. Okay, do you bring them out in the large glasses too? Oh yeah, Okay. gotta have a large have glass. To. <laughs> and the paloma is made as well with the fresh grapefruit juice too. Awesome, awesome. Well, it's been so cool to hear about both the drinks and the food. I'm curious to know a little bit more about your future plans. Um, do you think that there will be a Cantaritos in Milwaukee coming anytime soon, or is this gonna stay um, over in Kenosha? You know, I'm very ambitious and very optimistic, so. Yeah, that's a goal of mine. Um, right now, I'm focusing more on reaching the most potential I can at this location. Mm. Um, we're planning on building a patio this summer and expand the building, you know, a couple more feet. Okay. Um, but after that, you know, let's do it. You know, if it works, it works. Cool. Well, I'm going to have to come out there and visit yeah, this summer visit sometime. Me. We'll make it happen this <laughs> summer. All we'll right. Do. Well, thank you so much, Beto, for joining us today. It's been really lovely to learn more about your restaurant and the family um, history all behind it. Um, you are definitely an inspiration to me and to many others out there. All right, so thank you again, Beto. Yeah, thank you. Nolwen Guiarte, who recently moved to Milwaukee from Venezuela, and as a food lover and searching for new places, he ran into a Peruvian cuisine located in West Dallas, just minutes from the state fair. Let's explore along with him and see what type of delicia he's found. Chef Paz Restaurant, a Peruvian cuisine located in West Alice on Night Fierce and National. My name is Nolan Guilardi, and today we'll be learning about this delicious Peruvian cuisine. Smells amazing in the very moment that you walk in. It looks very cozy, but I wonder what's popular to order here. What is ordered the most? Well, basically anything that's in the menu first. So the sauteed lamo steak, the rice with chicken, chicken pot gratin, and ceviche. The ceviche is what's most popular. It's one of the most delicious dishes, and the people order the most. Then comes the sauteed lomo steak. What about Chef Pass' favorite dish? I don't have any favorite dishes. It depends on the day. If it's a cold day, I like the parihuela, which is a seafood soup. And if it's summer, I love eating ceviche. La jalea, which is fried food or fried seafood. But depends on the day. There's so many flavors that I don't have the same taste every day. <laughs> it's different and it varies. Peru has a variety of recipes, thousands of recipes, and I can't fit them all in one menu. And so I've created a menu, not too short, but everything needs to be fresh. So that's what's essential for me. For the case of the guisos, onions always have to be diced and include garlic or camino without pepper. Like sofrito, the way Puerto Ricans make it. The difference being what they do is they don't brown their sauce. We make sure to keep it brown and caramelized. That's the difference in flavors between Puerto Rico and all over Latin America. Everything smells so delicious, and everyone seems to find comfort here for a lunch break. I wonder what I should get to drink. 
The chicha morada, we make it from scratch. So we cook the purple corn with all spices, including cinnamon, cloves, pineapple, and we boil it for hours in huge pots. It's one of my favorites because it's good for blood pressure, it's healthy. We also have the Inca Cola, which is a Peruvian soda we make with lemongrass. Being from Venezuela, I can tell countries in Latin America had differences, but sure have many similarities. The Mexican and Hispanic culture in general is very well known all over the world, and we're all there. As Mexican and Peruvian, we're on the same genre, basically. We have different cultures, but when it comes to food, it's almost the same. Same flavors and traditions. After listening about all these Peruvian delicias, I think I have decided what I might order. I feel excited even though. I never been here before actually, but I heard they have the best Peruvian ceviche. So let's check it out. While we wait for my order, let's listen to what inspired Marisa Paz before becoming a chef. One of my biggest inspirations is when I was little. I remember watching my mom cook, and in Peru, we didn't have the best resources. My mom would buy us toys, and she was a teacher. What I would do, I would gather tuna cans, I would clean them out, and I would cook and would build my own fire with sticks. In a garden we used to have. I remember that's what I would do. Almost every week I would play with fire and play kitchen. I think watching my mom cook every day through caterings was my inspiration. My whole life I've been part of a kitchen. I always have to help or skim something. Back then, there weren't many Peruvian restaurants here. So all of that became key to opening up a restaurant here. I would like to see more restaurants here. For example, Milwaukee, we don't have Colombian restaurants or Uruguayan. I think they will be opening one though. Argentinian, they have excellent food. Being Mexican, I would like more Mexican people to learn about different cultures, to take that anywhere with them and for it to become a part of us too. Looks like my order is ready. Mmm, yummy. I ordered the ceviche mix too, made by fresh chunks of fish mere with lime juice and garnish it with red onion. And this rice with chicken looks amazing. Time to dig in. Back to you guys at the studio, Michelle. Wow, que delicia. Thank you, Nolan, for showing us one of the best Peruvian spots here in Milwaukee, and I'm so glad you were able to enjoy dining at Chef Paz. Looks like you have a new favorite spot for sure. I know I definitely need to stop by there right after this because that ceviche looked delicioso. <laughs> Learning about all of these things that inspire Roberto Jaimes and Chef Maritza Paz reminds me of how much my own parents and family members inspire me to keep thriving and working very hard. There is definitely something most of us Latinos have in common, amazing food and the love we have for our countries and where our ancestors are from. It really intrigues me to keep learning about everyone's cultures and inspirations to keep pushing forward here in America, whether we are first or second generation sons and daughters. Next, we will get to know Ivan, as they will help us understand the struggles of our growing Latin community here in Brew City. Welcome and thank you for joining us today, Ivan. I'm so excited to have you here. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, gracias. Muchas gracias por invitarme. Yes, we're so happy to have you. Estoy muy, muy emocionada. <laughs> so, Ivan, you are a local here in Milwaukee, right? But you are from Venezuela? Venezuela. Wow, I'm increíble. ¿Cuántos años Venezuela. aquí? Um, En Estados Unidos tengo seis años. Six years, okay. Y en Milwaukee tengo dos. Two years in Milwaukee. Okay, yeah. beautiful. No, un poquito. Ya voy para tres. Oh, okay, so two to three years <laughs> here in Milwaukee. We were chatting before this, and um, it seems that there 
aren't very many Venezuelan restaurants aquí in Milwaukee, no? No hay mucho restaurantes mm -hmm. for, for, you know, Venezuelan food. There's not many here, but um, I've, been, I've been told that you really love to cook. So I'm curious to hear <laughs> about some of the Venezuelan dishes that you like to make at home. Um, so, ¿qué tipo de platillos? What type of food? Um, la comida tradicional venezolana, bueno, es muy parecida, yo creo que en casi todo Latinoamérica. Mm -hmm. eh, uno de los platos típicos es como el pan. Okay. Eh, 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 hay hogares donde se come en la mañana, en el mediodía, en la noche, es lo que se llama la arepa. La arepa es una especie de tortilla, okay. un poco más gruesa. Es hecha de maíz eh, de, de corn. Ok, so pan, maíz, and what else? Uh, pan es bread. Uh -huh. Pan, maíz, corn. Maíz, corn. Es, es, uh, es, sí, es una, es una masa uh -huh. yeah. de corn. The corn masa for the, uh, for the bread. Es, es similar to the, to the tortilla. Ok. But tortilla es too thin. Mm -hmm. The arepa is a little... Okay, so thick. for arepas, it's a little bit thicker. Yes, yeah. it's, it's normally this is the size. Mm -hmm. um, we mix the, the, the core with water and salt. Water and salt? It's no more. Yeah. Water and salt. And um, we put it in, in the pan. And we made two, two sides. Okay. And then we it. put it in the oven. Okay. And it's super flaky, a little bit flaky, very soft. It's soft inside, but it's a little crunchy. Like crispy on the outside, yes. yeah. No, not too crispy, crunchy, more crunchy okay. than crispy. A lot of textures, it sounds like. Yes. Yeah, oh, que rico. Uh, I want one right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to your house after this. <laughs> yes. And next, when we take out the oven, we, we open, we put it everything you want. Some people put it only cheese. Mm -hmm. uh, other people put uh, meat. ¿Qué tipo de carne? Asada or puerco, uh, pollo, todo. Cualquier clase de carne. Hay diferentes tipos de arepas. Tú las comes con lo que quieras. Arepas, okay. Uh, arepas. La puedes rellenar de, eh, no sé, <laughs> ¿cómo se llama? Carne mechada. It's like flat meat. Like flats, where it's like thin. The carne is shredded or flat. No te preocupes. No worries. Pero esa es muy popular. La rellenas con carne mechada, queso amarillo. Okay. Y se llama peluda. Okay, so you're gonna put cheese, different types of meat. Cebolla también. You put onion for flavor no, to bring out the no flavor? No, no en esa. Hay otras, tú puedes hacer lo que llamamos un perico, que es eh, huevo con tomate y cebolla. Okay. Y rellenas la arepa. Okay. También. Perfect. Okay, beautiful. O sea, la arepa la rellenas con lo que te provoque. <laughs> I need to try one of these arepas, but I want to know a little bit more about um, not only the arepas, but also la cultura de venezolana and how this culture um, might influence the food, right? Because um, culture and togetherness and family, this always influences the food, yeah. um, especially in Latin culture. Um, so especially with memories, right? Like yeah. scents and yeah. tastes. This sometimes can help us, um, you know, think of different memories when we smell something or we taste something. Yeah. So, tengo una pregunta para ti. Okay. <laughs> Lo siento porque yo hablo un poco feo en español. No, no, no. <laughs> I'll try for you. <laughs> <laughs> yo <hablo> uh, so, <laughs> do you have um, do you have memories, certain memories um, with the food from when you were when you were young? Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Uh, nosotros los venezolanos tenemos una comida típica para las fechas navideñas uh -huh. que se llama la yaca y es una preparar la yaca uh -huh. era una fiesta familiar yeah, the food at the cuando yo times. era pequeña estaba con mis primos mis hermanos y mi mamá mi papá bueno mi papá no tanto pero mi mamá mi abuela mi tía y era cada uno tenía una función para hacer la yaca. 
Los niños lavábamos las hojas, usábamos hojas de plátano uh -huh. y los niños lavaban las hojas, las secaban, las madres hacían lo que se llama el guiso, cortaban los ingredientes oh, okay. y después a, nos, a los niños nos ponían a hacer unas bolitas de masa. So when you're little, you're helping out. You're helping out in the family. Yes. You have your cousins, you have your brothers and sisters around, and yes. all, everyone's involved. Everyone's making some of the food, whether the kids are helping to make the masa and for the arepas and things like this. Yes. Yeah? Yes. ¿Es verdad? Yes. That's, that's it? ¿Es correcto? Correctísimo, <laughs> sí. Okay. Sí, era una fiesta, o sea, es una fiesta hacer la yaca. Es un, un momento familiar. Mm. Y, y bueno, sí, otra cantidad de, de comidas pues, que tú recuerdas es el olor, el, el, los momentos wow. compartidos porque, porque eran momentos que tenías que hacer la comida en familia. That's beautiful. Yeah. So it has so much to do with your family and the culture and it just, it's more than just the food. It's really about everything that comes before with the past generations yes. as well. So yes. that's beautiful. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Yeah. I have more questions for you after this. We're going to chat and we're going to have an arepa later. Okay. <laughs> well, it's been great to get to know you and I'm super excited. So thank you so much for taking the time to tell us more about your food and your culture. We have reached the end of today's show, so I want to send a big thanks again out to Roberto, Nolwin, Shafas, Ivan, and everyone else that has joined us. See you very, very soon. Until next time on Delicias Milwaukee. Nos vemos.